Alrighty, everybody. Class is back in session yet again for the Swift UI Firebase chat application series. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. And I hope you've been able to follow along with everything up to this point of the course here. Uh, today's video, what exactly do we want to learn how to do for our chat app? Well, let me go ahead and show you uh, a little bit of functionality inside of our completed application here. And basically what I wanna do is to render out the actual chat log view, which kind of looks like this. So what exactly do we have? Well, we have a vertical scroll view and uh, inside of my scroll view here, we have a list of messages, right? Uh, some of the messages are incoming. The white ones here, those are outgoing, I believe. And then uh, we also have some of these images right here as well. Uh, at the very bottom of our page or this view here, we have the image picker. You can click on that. Uh, right to the direct right of the picker, we have the actual text component here. So. Uh, you can type in text for chatting here and it will scroll, see so scroll downwards as you type more. So that is a nice component. We'll learn how to build. And finally, the uh, send message uh, shows up on the right side of that uh, row at the bottom. So the question now is uh, how exactly do we build out this page, right? Well, in the last episode, uh, I showed everyone how to build out the chat log view with the fake messages here. Uh, so on line 216, you'll see fake message for now. And what I'll do is I'm gonna transform this into something that looks a little closer to what we have uh, here. And then once we get the view done, we'll actually discuss how a message is actually sent to the Firebase servers. All right, so hopefully you guys can follow along. I'm gonna go ahead and start coding right now. All right, uh, first thing I will do is I'm gonna hit Command Shift P here inside of my uh, main message view. Uh, why don't I hit the stop and play again and I'll get this view here. Uh, let's see, new message, we have this here, clicking on waterfall one, we slide into the chat log view. Uh, first thing I wanna do is, I'm just going to refactor this entire view into its own view file. So in other words, I will cut that and I will click on here and I'll just create a new group. Uh, to make it easier to follow, I'll call this group chat. Instead of here, I'll give it the Swift UI view of chat log view and hit create like so. Now this, uh, hopefully you guys can see what's going on here. I'm going to take this and paste that here and uh, hit command shift P to resume. And everything should start running, hopefully. Uh, this guy right here requires you to pass in this chat user right there. So why don't we go ahead and fix that right off the bat here. Uh, for this chat user optional, you can use a nil value. Uh, that will be fine. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like right now once this starts to render out on the right side. And uh, here you go. Uh, you have this fake message, uh, this scroll view right here. You hit the play. You can actually start uh, pulling this guy up and down very easily. Uh, last thing I might want to do is to add this navigation bar at the very top. And uh, you're going to want to add the navigation view inside the preview here. Uh, you don't want to have too many duplicate navigation bars. So that's what we'll, uh, you know, this is where we'll put it. Um, next, we have the missing navigation uh, email address, which is right here. So currently it's blank, and um, some of you guys can guess why it's blank, and basically the chat user is nil here, so that's why it's blank. Uh, you can actually create a chat user, a fake one, or an actual real one. Uh, so in other words, you can say right here is a fake at gmail.com. Uh, once you have that, you'll see the fake uh, showing right there on the very top. 
Uh, instead of using this fake address, I'm going to use um, an actual real one called uh, waterfall1 at gmail.com. Um, in addition to the email, I'll also provide it with the real user ID, so real user ID. And I believe I'll close that off and hit a comma there. Now, uh, to make our lessons actually um, kind of real, we don't want to use this fake ID here. And what I'll do is I'm going to go into the database of users there and I'll find my waterfall one and the user ID is this R8 value. Uh, I'll copy that and then I'll go back into my application uh, Xcode here and I'll just replace it with a UID. Uh, you don't have to do this just yet, but uh, later on when we send messages to this user, we'll need a real user ID to have it make sense. All right, so uh, hopefully you guys can find the UID correctly. It's not too hard. All right, uh, last thing we want to do here is uh, we can start rendering out these bubbles in the blue, and then we'll talk about this bottom row at the uh, very bottom of our page. So this guy right here, I'm going to create this blue bubble by doing this here. I think I want to use a padding value and a... Uh, background color of a blue like that. Um, that should get me really close to what I need. And uh, for the text message color, we'll simply add on the foreground color of white. Hmm, that looks quite good to me. I'll add a corner radius of eight and I will slide this down to the bottom like that to get this rounded corner. Uh, whenever I'm sliding this up and down like that, I'm hitting command option and left bracket and right bracket to go up and down. Um, let's see, that's pretty close to what I want, I believe, uh, for the actual scroll view. You can add a background color of um, da, 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 light gray, let's see, light gray, that's how you spell it. Uh, if you have light gray, your view kind of looks like that, um, seems to be okay for me. Uh, H stack is right here. I'll add a spacer to get me some uh, horizontal space. And that's what we have. Uh, for the light gray, it's quite dark. So what I typically like to do is I like to use the init of white, I believe I want to use 0 0.95 and the alpha value of one. It gives me this really nice looking shade of gray. Okay, I can still slide this guy up and down. And the last thing I am going to do here is uh, I'm going to slide these blue bubbles to the right edge of the screen and it's simply going to look like this. I'm going to add another H stack and a spacer right there, and I'll pull all of this uh, into the H stack above. And then for the actual H stack, I will say uh, padding. So padding horizontal gives me some padding right here. And then I'll just give it a top padding as well. And our messages will start to look like that. Uh, I'll use a padding value of eight um, just to <laughs> make this a little nicer. Okay, uh, that was pretty easy. And typically when you're rendering out Swift UI, uh, view UI code, it's a lot easier than the old ways, uh, the old ways of UI kit. All right, so let's see. The next thing we are going to move on to here is the bottom bar. And it contains a couple of elements here. So, uh, the question now is, how exactly do we render out this bottom bar inside of this scroll view thing here? And uh, you can do this a couple of different ways. Uh, one way that you might want to try first is to use this V stack here. And uh, let's see, I'll give it this right here. I'll do a scroll view inside of it. And once you have this, you'll get that right there. And you can add, start adding some components below. So here is uh, my chat bar uh, with three components. And uh, you see, I have my scroll view up here, right? And my chat bar is showing up at the very bottom. So 
that looks like it's kind of okay. So I'll just uh, continue on with this approach. All right, so my three components inside of this bottom bar area is the image picker right here. So you can use um, the system image of something and I'll use the gear for now just to have something show up. I uh, don't remember exactly what that image is called. I'll find it later. And then we will have the text field right next to it. Uh, this guy requires you to um, use this, I suppose. Uh, for the title key, this is just the description right here. And then for the actual text binding, we'll need something else. Uh, I'll remove that right here. And uh, the text binding, I will add it. Uh, for now, we will just use it as a state variable of, uh, let's see, chat message. That seems to be okay. I'll, hmm, maybe I'll just call it the chat text like that. All right, so chat text is just the empty string and I'll use the chat text right here. You'll see it start showing up. Uh, you don't really need the prompt, so I will remove it. And uh, now we are going to wait for our uh, preview to render out itself on the right side. Again, if you don't see it, just hit a space bar in your, uh, your Xcode editor here. It'll force it to re-render. Okay, so that is looking pretty good. You can slide this guy up and down. Um, there's a bug with the uh, Swift UI preview that kind of does this right here. Just ignore that for now. Uh, it should be fine in the simulator as well as your iPhone. Um, lastly, I will give this guy a padding value like that. And that looks pretty good. So slide up and down and nothing too wrong with this approach just yet. So finally, what I will do is render out my send button on the right side. Um, bum, 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 and text is there and the send is there as well. So here is my button and you'll see the send button showing up there. Um, if you want to add the blue background, it's very easy to do so with the background of, up, 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 of blue and this is the foreground color of white. It just makes the uh, the button stand out a little more. And uh, we will give this a padding of that. So that's a really large button. I'll do that and padding of vertical. Let's see vertical eight like that. So that's looking pretty good. Um, at the very least, it's good enough for, <laughs> for our video lesson today. So once you have that, the button should start showing up. And I don't know exactly why the, uh, the corner radius isn't showing here. So that looks pretty good. Uh, I'll give the corner radius of five and that looks a, a little nicer to me, I think. And everything with our uh, button is looking quite good. Um, for the H stack padding, let me use horizontal and I'll use the same trick of the vertical here. Uh, once you do that, you'll see that your bottom bar area is a little shorter than what we had before. Okay, so the last thing I want to do here is I want to fix this gear button here. And the way to find uh, images inside of your uh, iOS 13 applications, you can go ahead and open up the SF Symbols application. Uh, you can find this just by simply Googling it. And uh, I'm going to search my images here. So just type in there and whatever you want, I will use, uh, I think I'll use this one, just copy the name. And I think you have to click on that and then right click and copy. Um, there seems to be a bug with this SF symbols that doesn't allow me to copy the name. Um, I'm not sure why that bug is occurring, but it's really annoying. Uh, it seems like you have to click on a couple of things for it to work. But once you have the name in your clipboard, you can go back to your uh, image system name and uh, you'll see that it just changes automatically like that. Uh, to make it larger, I'll give it the size of 24 and uh, you'll get this effect here. Um, bum, 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 and maybe give it a color of dark gray. I think you might need to wrap this in a color here. So the dark gray looks a little lighter than pure black, and that's pretty much what we have. Uh, for the H stack, I'll give it a spacing of 16, and now you'll get something that looks like this. So 
Uh, here is my bottom chat bar that will allow for some text input. Okay, so some of you guys might uh, notice a slight difference between this view right here that pushes the text uh, horizontally and the component here is actually a text editor. So this uh, component is a text editor that allows for text to scroll up and down when needed. All right, so you see you can kind of slide this guy up and down like that. It actually has a scroll view on the, the right side. So maybe I'll leave it up to you guys to figure out how the text editor component works. So send right here, you'll see that message there. Okay, uh, so again, that component is a text editor. It looks like this, so text editor, and you just open it up like so, and you'll give it a binding right here. So chat text looks something like that. Um, the annoying part about the text editor is that it doesn't have its own uh, placeholder text, like the placeholder here, description. So uh, I guess I'll let you guys figure out how to, you know, render out this placeholder. Okay, so video not too long today. Um, the next thing I'll do is I'm gonna go back to my main messages view and I'll see how everything looks. So I am going to go here. Uh, we are going to resume and hopefully just click command uh, option P to resume again. Now, every time you create a new file inside of your Xcode editor, it takes a couple of retries to uh, restart the preview. So click on that. We will go to jame at gmail.com and this is the view that we get. Um, again, there's this bug here where the view hides behind the nav bar. And I have seen this before. Uh, I don't remember exactly why it occurs, but uh, when you load this inside of your simulator, I think it goes away. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what the cause is for that bug, but uh, we'll see that and that and scroll up and down. So this issue, I believe it's an issue with the simulator and with the iPhone, this issue should go away, I believe. Um, so I'll just leave it like that for now. Um, one approach that you might try to fix this issue here is this. So let me scroll that out of the way here. And I'll try to show you a VStack approach to the uh, chat log view here. Uh, I'll resume and yeah, this bug is kind of annoying me at the moment. Let's see, do, do, do. Um, you'll see for your uh, chat log view, right? Your body is growing pretty large here. So one approach to fixing this issue is to cut that code and just say, uh, what do you want to call this chat? So chat bottom bar, that sounds like an okay name. Uh, private var chat bottom bar is some view. Uh, paste all that code in here. Uh, command option P to resume and you'll see your bar. Uh, it should show up down at the very bottom again. And then the next thing I will do here is I will refactor this view as well. So I am going to take this here and I'm gonna call this the messages view and I will render it right at the very bottom. So private, uh, private var messages view and some view and we'll just paste it here. Uh, again, the reason why I'm doing that is to clean up the body inside of my uh, view area, you'll see if you download um, Apple's Swift UI sample projects, they take the same approach where uh, they refactor the complicated views inside of a, a private view like this here. All right, so that bug seems like it's still there. And one approach that I've tried to use to fix this issue is to use a Z stack instead. And I think, uh, let's just see if this actually works here. 
Bum, bum, bum. I will do that here. So you'll see this view shows up here. Uh, this view kind of does this right now. It doesn't have that weird issue where the navigation bar gets kind of hidden like so. And uh, let me comment that out right here. That kind of does this now. So again, I'm not exactly sure why the V stack doesn't um, work correctly. And I'm not sure why this Z stack approach actually works instead, but that's what we have. And it looks like it's okay. Uh, if you want to pull this chat bar down to the uh, very bottom of your view there, you can do this in a couple of ways. Um, maybe I'll show you the V stack way first. So this is how you do that. Bum, bum, bum. So you'll just use a V stack and right above everything on top of the, uh, the bar area here, it's just the empty spacer and that looks pretty good. Uh, you might want to give this the background color of, let's see, color of white or, you know, whatever you want for your application, it should work. And it looks like the, uh, the background is covering everything inside of your view. You might want to do this instead. I think that's a better approach. Okay, now the last thing you can see is that when you slide this uh, scroll view down to the very bottom there, um, this actually peeks through the chat bar at the very bottom. So that's a little unfortunate. Um, there's a fix for that as well, but the first thing I wanna kind of fix here is I'll remove these uh, comments and I'm gonna bump the scroll view for each. I'm going to bump this up to 20 here. And you'll see that once I bump that value up to 20, I will hit the, let's see, hit, let me hit a space right here to re-render. And the moment that I have like 20 uh, fake messages inside of my scroll view, you can see this problem here where uh, if you scroll all the way down, so I'm all the way at the very bottom of my scroll view right now, you'll see that the actual last message is hidden behind this chat bar area. Uh, so obviously that's not what you wanna do. And one way to fix that is to give your scroll view some uh, padding value. Um, ba -ba -ba, I'll give this a value of 65. I believe that kind of does this here. So again, that looks kind of good. And we have this error at the very top of our application. Again, uh, I'll try to run this in the simulator one more time and it should start to work. Uh, it's always a little challenging to fix these weird issues inside of Swift UI. But uh, if this doesn't work, I'll have to present you guys with a final solution to click on that. And yeah, so this bug uh, doesn't seem to be going away with our Z stack, but at the very least, we have this being fixed inside of our application. Uh, we should get something like this, but I believe the fix is a little bit more <laughs> involved. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave you guys with this uh, final bit of code here and um, some of you guys can attempt to fix this issue. Uh, I'll leave the solution to this problem there. Uh, I'll put the solution in the downloads below and I'll wrap it up right here. Uh, see you guys in the next lesson. Bye-bye.